All right, you've seen it here. You've seen it first. Premiere Pro Beta is available for the Apple ARM-based M1 computers. I've been testing it out on the M1 Mac Mini. And, you know, it's pretty exciting because at first when I was doing these Mac Mini and Premiere Pro videos, it was a, well, if Adobe will support um, M1, the ARM chip or not. And the good news today is that they are. They're working on a version of Premiere Pro optimized for Apple Silicon. So it's pretty exciting. So we're gonna talk about it in just a moment. So stick around and we'll get into it right after this. All right, we've got Premiere Pro installed here. Um, I want you to kind of take a look here is when I go to open, it's weird. It opens not just one instance of Premiere Pro, but opens two instances of Premiere Pro. Now, I don't know what that means. Uh, you know, it's beta, so you know, it's, it's, they're still working out a lot of bugs. Beta testing is really for us to find bugs, to find problems with it. That's one of them, because I don't know which one of these to go to. All right, so we're gonna open up a project here. This is a project from last week's video, the We Light RB9 light. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Uh, the link's somewhere here. But let's open this project in Premiere Pro, the beta. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to here, right click open with Premiere Pro the beta. Looks like it's set to my default. All right, so this is my timeline from last week's video. See some errors here. Um, I have the resolution switched to full because I wanna see how well this plays. What if we scrub the timeline? Sounds pretty good. Pretty sturdy. Controls on it, we have a mode button. We have a set button. We have... What I've also noticed is that in the past, using text in your Premiere Pro timeline, that really boggles it down. So let's drop some text right here. This is the We Light RB9. How fast does this load here? Because usually I've had problems. That's pretty good, except for I didn't do it right. Let's go with Barlow, Medium. Move this over here. So far, performance is looking pretty good. We're gonna add a cross dissolve on here and play it. Can't see it, so let's drop shadow in on there. Edges as well. We really like that. But along with the diffuser, it does. It's pretty good. I I never ever because of the computers I've had, I never ever edit in full resolution playback. I'm usually at a quarter with proxy on top of that. So this is pretty good. Scrubbing's all right. Um, you know, there's a little clip here that I have of me holding the phone. So let's add a little warp stabilizer on there. Everything's pretty responsive. Okay, that's analyzing. Um, let's see, about 94 frames here. 39 seconds counting down. And that's pretty good, honestly, because on the version that I do have of Premiere Pro that is released, that I've used on this Mac using the Rosetta 2 translation there, um, it actually takes longer to do the warp stabilization. This is pretty good. You know, it's not perfect. It does bounce in and out, but that's just how that warp stabilization works. And that was pretty fast. So, a couple of things. I'm gonna stop you right here and tell you that the beta is not ready for prime time yet. There are a couple of issues. Actually, there's a lot of issues wrong with it, but we are headed in the right direction. One of them being, you can see my audio track down here. We do have my voice track, my vocal track, but that's a wave file. This right here is my soundtrack for the music, and it is actually an MP3 file. So what I've discovered is if I try to relink the media and I go locate it, it actually doesn't show up. The MP3s don't show up in here at all, but I do have it in the folder. That's this track right here and it's not showing up in here because it is a MP3 file. However, what's nice is Artlist gives you the option to download both MP3 and WAV files. So I could replace that with the WAV version of that song. So it does have this wave version right here that I can go to and replace that. And it works out fine. So I could play it back here. Rubber diffuser. 
And this diffuser is nice because it's a little bit raised and you can see how it's raised a little. So if you want to use the beta, you got to use WAV files. Other than that, from the quick use that I've had it, I haven't noticed any other issues. Everything else has been running pretty smooth and quick for me, pretty snappy. But in the Adobe support community, there is a log here about all the things that are still not ready about Premiere Pro for the M1 Mac. Let's, let's read through some of these here. Replace, render, and replace. Won't open project files after downgrading to 14.7 and upgrading back to 14.8. Audio only disappears suddenly. Let's see. Quick export is a feature. Choppy playback issue with red footage. This The footage I have is from the A7C. This is 8-bit footage. I'm sorry for 10-bit for footage users out there. I don't have a 10-bit camera. Uh, I'm not a baller like you guys to get those red cameras. Not yet. But most people are shooting on similar cameras to what I'm using. So, But it's some pretty exciting stuff. So not only did a Premiere Pro beta come out, but a Photoshop beta, Premiere Rush beta, and an Audition beta. So all these betas optimize for M1 Mac, whether it be the Mac Mini or the MacBook Pro or the MacBook Air. It's pretty awesome, in my opinion. Is it ready for prime time for you to use, for us to use for editing? No. Is it a step in the right direction? Yes, it is, because our prayers are being answered and Premiere Pro is coming to us supported on an M1. This is pretty quick, too, because you have to think about it. Like, these Macs just came out a month ago. And so Adobe's been working pretty hard at optimizing these applications. Also, Premiere Pro, it's it's a heavy product. I mean, it's 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 old, so there's a lot of old code in there that they need to rework through and clean up. Um, if you know anything about software, it's just moving in sprints, building upon, building upon, building upon, and moving it efficiently and quickly to get the features out as fast as we can and as efficiently as we can, giving us an MVP. So that is Premiere Pro Beta on the M1 Mac Mini. This Mac Mini that I have is 16 gigabytes of RAM, two terabytes of SSD storage internal. And yeah, so this is pretty awesome. Um, if there are any tests you wanna see me do with Premiere Pro Beta, this first version, I'll drop it in the comments below. I'll see if I can get to it and answer your questions for you. And also, if you found value in this video, you wanna see more like it, please, please, please help me build this channel. Hit that subscribe button, tell your friends about it. And yeah, spread the word because this channel is booming and growing thanks to all of you and your support. So thank you for that. And it's Christmas week. So thank you, Adobe. And thank you. So for all of you out there, I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. Have a good time with your loved ones this holiday season. For those friends of mine that aren't Christian, that don't celebrate Christmas, um, happy holidays to you. And I'm wishing the best for you and yours this holiday season as well. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.